Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Who knew Flanders is the most powerful country in EU4? Literally, that's the truth. Don't let anybody else tell you any differently. But hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be continuing the A to Z challenge, the challenge where we play every nation in EU4 in 1444 with unique national ideas in alphabetical order. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the nation of Flanders. Flanders is a nation located in the Low Countries region of Europe in the northern portion of Europe. And as you all know, we start off as a junior partner of the very powerful nation of Burgundy. Burgundy also has a couple of other subjects along with us, such as their vassal Nevers and their two other junior partners Brabant and Holland so breaking free from Burgundy is gonna be our first task for this campaign right here of course we're gonna start off with a random ruler because our ruler right now is Duke Philippe which is Burgundy's guy and we don't know what we're gonna get we may get a good guy we may get a bad guy who knows and Flemish ideas are actually pretty good man we start off with plus 10% goods produced which is super super strong institution embracement discount then we got trade efficiency as an ambition production efficiency plus 15% is super super strong minus 10% dev discount missionary strength and institution spread are kind of mad light ship cost is also kind of mad but the tech discount and attrition for enemies are really really good so flanders is a nation that's very well suited for playing tall along with the other dutch nations as you all know but what do we do as flanders well flanders does have the famous flemish lion on their flag and what other famous lion exists in europe that's right sweden the lion of the north so that's why for today's campaign ladies and gentlemen as the flemish lion we are are going to be tasked with conquering the capital of the Lion of the North, Stockholm. That's right, our goal is going to be to conquer the province of Stockholm for today's challenge, and as a bonus goal, if we have time, we might even make Sweden not exist. This is definitely going to be a very tough campaign. We need to break free from Burgundy. We need to expand in the HRU with insane aggressive expansion, fight maybe even England and France, and then fight the Kalmar Union. Can I do it? I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to see. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And boys, consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 100k subs before PDXCon at the beginning of September, or else I'm gonna have to switch my main game from EU4 to March of the Eagles. Pain. <laughs> Let's jump in as Flanders. All right, all right, here we are as Flanders. And like I said, the first thing we need to do is break free from Burgundy. But there's another interesting thing about Flanders. Unlike the other two Burgundian personal union partners up here, we're not in the HRE. So uh, we will have to enter it to be able to conquer some of these guys up here without fighting Austria as well. But thankfully, it is sort of easy to break free from Burgundy. All we got to do is get the rivals to support our independence, hopefully England and France. And let's see, they are rival to England and they are hmm, maybe rival to France. Well, France is rival to Burgundy, but I think we can get them to support us. The first thing we want to do is go into our estates and do estate stuff. All right, all right, estate stuff done. Let me take a look if I have a Diplo rep guy and I actually do. That's awesome. Four advisors, what? All right, let's get that guy. Now these guys will for sure support us. Let me scroll up and see right here. Yeah, England will support me. That's awesome. What about France? Oh, France will support me too. Easy, baby, easy. Let's see if anyone else will. Aragon will too, apparently. All right, this is about to be the easiest independence war in the history of easy independence wars. But for now, we can take our boats right here and take them up there so the other subjects don't pummel us. And uh, let me take a look at our force limit right here. It's seven. Let's get rid of that horse because it's kind of expensive at the start. And lots of you guys mauled because I always get rid of horses. But take a look at this, man. One cavalry regiment costs 0.55 ducats a month, right? That's so expensive, man. That's like almost the cost of an advisor, right? Would you rather have an advisor or a horse? I know what I'd rather have. So let's get rid of that horse and get three more infantry regiments right here and maybe i'll get the free company up and running too so let me get aragon to support me and i got aragon to support me but burgundy actually let me go so it was actually a mistake getting aragon to support me uh i actually wanted to fight burgundy but if they like me uh i was thinking getting the burgundian inheritance but they hate me all right this throws a big wrench into our plan boys i didn't actually want to be let go uh but you know a to z no restarting or stuff like that no saves coming uh i guess we're not fighting burgundy let's spy on friesland i don't know now how are these guys still supporting my what 
the what is this okay so now we don't have any relations um how many relations with austria do we need to enter the hre 121 hmm, that should be easy right oh yeah we can definitely get that all right let me enter the hre then um maybe i'll try and get friendly with burgundy too a uh, good thing about this is we didn't lose stab from declaring the independence war i guess <laughs> i wanted to fight them <laughs> okay so i have gotten burgundy uh to like me i just got that we need our imported iron event where uh they gain 60 opinion of us and actually this is really good because uh uh, now we're in contention for the Burgundian inheritance, which is, uh, I guess, pretty good. So let's ally them and royal marry them. And of course, that'll also prevent them from declaring a restoration of union war on us, even though we're in the HRE, because as we all know, Burgundy doesn't care about attacking the HRE. We've seen it so many times. And I don't know if I said this enough, but when you want to get the Burgundian inheritance, don't accept a royal marriage from Burgundy, because then it'll break once the once Charles dies. So always send Burgundy a royal marriage offer yourself. That way you're going to be eligible. I got to stop. This is too much education for an A to Z run. And there we go. We got enough relations with Austria to join the HRE. Perfect. Can we also ally them? Um... Uh, Probably not. All right, so I've been improving with Austria. I'm just one reason away from Royal marrying them. I tried everything, so I won't be able to get that going. But uh, I've also laid Munster and Brunswick, and I've spied on Friesland. So now I'm just going to wait for some favors and uh, start our conquest here. It really sucks that we're not going to be able to take these provinces, at least for now. I'm still hoping for the Burgundian inheritance, like I said. But uh, yeah, man, waiting on favors and uh, boats for now. And what's our game plan going to be for uh, taking Stockholm? I literally have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, dude. Oh, yeah, we also got a pretty bad starting ruler. 133, bruh. Well, we got Charles on the throne. Uh, it's gonna be a while before he dies, of course, but yeah, there we go. Ah, of course. <laughs> Of course, these fools. I'm glad they didn't call me into that. In fact, let me stop it before they get any clever ideas and click that button right here. I'm not getting involved with that, dog. Anyway, I've got favors with these boys right here, so it's time for me to start my own war as well. Let me just ask for access through uh, Holland right here and go ahead and declare on Friesland. They're only allied to Death Martian. This is gonna be easy. Me and Moonster can totally do it. So uh, yeah, let's get it, man. I even got naval supremacy too. And this was an extremely easy war. Of course, we are gonna full annex Friesland, 34 AE. Eh, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. But there we go. Expansion has started, man. Uh, I'm still salty about not owning Antwerp or Den Haag or something like that. Uh, but yeah, from this position, we can basically already spy on Denmark and have a CP on them, man. Now it's just a matter of getting powerful enough and getting some strong-ish allies that are maybe Denmark's rivals, like... Um, Poland and Muscovy, that wouldn't be a bad idea now, would it? Uh, I wonder if I can link with them. I might be able to link with Poland. And yeah, man, once we consolidate over here a little bit, get an ally or two, I think we'll be able to pounce on Denmark. We will need big naval supremacy, though, so we might actually go with naval maritime here, boys. You know, I'm reminded of my Ferrara run, uh, which was last week, and uh, how we didn't get anything out of the Burgundian inheritance. I wonder if we get it. <laughs> Is it gonna be the same? Will we just struggle keeping them loyal? Uh, please no. Also, by the way, we're not gonna be forming the Netherlands this run. We're the Flemish Lion, remember? We do have unique missions as Flanders, by the way, pretty good ones. I think they're the Dutch ones, while well, Flemish missions, I guess they differ a bit from the Dutch ones. And let's get 100 mil power and challenge Spanish power as well, I guess. And it's time for a tier 2 government reform. You boys already know. Alright, Burgundy ended their Liege war. What happened? Pretty much nothing, I guess. Maybe they just white pieced? Yeah, they did just white piece. Uh, alright, I can uh, click this now and start gaining favors, though. Also, why does Burgundy have 81 trust with me? What did I do to get 81 trust with them? It's normal with these two guys. Maybe because I was their junior partner? Alright, now that I've dealt with some rebels and stuff, it's time to move along with our next war, and it's gonna be versus Utrecht. They're allied to Scotland, apparently, so... But who cares? Listen, Scotland, we don't care about that. So let's declare on Utrecht for their capital of Utrecht, calling these two guys right here, because Scotland might land, after all, I do think this is overkill, but whatever, let's continue our expansion. At this point, I've also improved enough with Poland to be able to royal marry them, and after this war, I'll be able to ally them. Awesome, man. There we go. A Danish rival is our ally. Well, it's gonna be our ally. And I'm already crushing all of these guys as navies, man. It's awesome. Now I just gotta wait to <laughs> white be Scotland. <laughs> I wish I lived in more enlightened times. All right, they unconditionally surrendered. Took him long enough. And we are gonna full annex Utrecht. Once again, no risk of a coalition because, well, AE has died way the frick down. So, Utrecht is ours too, baby. Nice. Gelray seems to be our next target. Now, considering the fact that we need both army and military stuff, I think it would be a good idea to open up with quality. And uh, thank you, Poland, for reminding me I was supposed to ally you. <laughs> 
So it's looking like Gelray isn't actually going to be our next war, and instead it's going to be East Frisia. Of course, another awesome province. They've already entered the HRE, but they do have that estuary for trade power, and they produce salt, so I do want that province. Let's call in these boys. Well, thank you, Burgundy, for beating up my rebels. That's very nice of you. Hey, Flemish trade. What the hell is heathen tendencies? <laughs> What's that? I've literally never seen that modifier, dude. It's like they know we might not stay Catholic or something. What is it? But yeah, we've also beaten up East Frisia. So let's full annex them as well. Nice. Looking good, baby. Maybe it's better to get let go from Burgundy? I don't know. At least we know Burgundy won't pick France and Austria, right? Because they're rival to both of them. So it's going to be between me, Sligo, or whatever it's called. Sorry, I'm not Irish, and Milan. I don't know exactly how it works. Maybe it's with prestige. I do have more prestige than both of those guys. So we'll see, I guess. Or maybe they'll just choose to remain independent, which is actually the worst case scenario. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm just helping out Moonster fight these guys, not my war. Well, at least it's not the Burgundy-Liege war. Huh, bruh. And by the way, if you guys want to know why Burgundy always declares these stupid wars, it's because Charles here is literally known as Charles the Bold in real life. And of course, he does have that trait in game too. Bold fighter. Uh, underestimate enemy strength. Sounds like good old Charles over here. Well, uh, accidental war time. As you all know, I wanted to click off of this. And by pressing C, I declared war on Gelray. But it's fine because I was going to do this anyway. Uh, I just wanted to see what's Poland doing because I could call them in. So there we go. I'm fighting uh, Gelray, who Brittany Brunswick, my boy. I curried favors with them for nothing because I wanted to make them break their lands. But hey, there we go. You know, uh, accidental wars are part of the charm, I guess. It would have been pretty messed up if Poland couldn't help me, huh? I called in Moonster as well just now to help me speed things up. Burgundy's really draining itself by fighting uh, Savoy and Venice here. They're super low on manpower and soldiers. Uh, if France ever wanted to declare on them, now would be the time. Let's hope I don't jinx myself. All right, and my war with Gelray here is done. So what I'm going to do is take Gelray from Gelray, obviously, and also make them a vassal since I can't reach this other province over here due to Brabant. And of course, I'm going to take all their money. So that's Gelray done too, man. Aggressive expansion is still not bad at all. We pretty much have all of the lowlands with the exception of the Burgundian subjects right here. All right, and Liege too. Are they disloyal? Of course they are, but we can just placate them once or twice. And maybe I shouldn't have done that because I kind of need prestige for Burgundy, possibly. But hey, we're cool. Um, Maybe I'm going to keep snaking up to Denmark over here, man. I don't see why not. We do have a couple of free cities in our way, but we'll see what we can do. So now I'm spying on Death March in here. Hopefully we can get a claim on them and fight them and take them over to be able to stage a landing over here at least for uh you know this portion of denmark and uh yeah that's how we're gonna move along man hopefully we can try and get some naval supremacy going here too build a bunch of galleys and heavies as we all know these three guys have super strong navies and they got a bunch of naval national ideas as well so it's not gonna be easy fighting them and anyway boys we gotta keep expanding right here because we're nowhere near strong enough to fight denmark yet so uh yeah let's fight death merchant and do the thing i said i was gonna do let's just call on monster right here this should be a pretty easy war Let's also centralize some bureaucracy while we're at it. And a death march in is ours. Yes, let's take that. All right, looking good, man. A is not too bad. I'm probably going to pounce on Oldenburg here as soon as I can, honestly. It's time for a second idea group here, and I do feel like economic would help us quite a lot in what we're trying to accomplish. I do need to start making more money. I just lost stab like three times, dude. First my ruler died, then I got stupid events. Jesus. All right, now that one of my allies who called me into war is done with their stuff, I can go ahead and move along with my stuff. Yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't want to fight Moonster. Wait, they didn't even join, though. And Charles here is like 56, man. He should be going pretty soon. That was easy. Thank you, Oldenburg. We haven't had one of these boys for a while. Let's see. Uh, let's see how he is. All right. Oh, oh that's an admiral. Dude, did I literally just lose 50 prestige for that? Hello. Yes, there it is, baby. They did choose us. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, this is going to suck. Oh, wait, they're not that disloyal like they were with Ferrara. But now I'm the war leader in a war with Savoy. Uh, no big deal. Let's just get this done. Uh, I don't know if we can get them loyal. Here's hoping for the horse event. All right. All right. All right. Since what Burgundy wanted is actually occupied by Milan, let's just I don't know, end this war, I guess. Whatever. I wonder what Austria is going to choose. Now I'm going to try and get some other allies here in case Austria decides to declare on me. So uh, let's link up with Castile here. Are they rival to Aragon? They're not. Uh, I might be able to get with Aragon here too. Let's see. Let's royal marry them. Ah, let's improve with them a little bit. And yeah, there we go. Austria is going to demand. 
And there it is. The Emperor demands the Low Countries. Of course, we can release all of these guys right here. And you guys know which guys are going to pop out. Like Picardy. Uh, maybe, I don't know, Luxembourg. Brabant. Holland. But uh, yeah, if we reject, Austria declares war on us. Do we have time to ally Aragon? Uh, let me try this right here. So let me scornfully insult an Aragonese rival like England. And yes, that did make Aragon want to ally me. So there we go. Now we got Aragon too. And now if Austria declares on us, uh, they'll have to fight all of these guys. And uh, let's see if they actually do declare. So yeah, Austria hasn't declared so far. And I'm just helping Burgundy fight Hungary. I mean, Bohemia. But it looks like it's going to be the same deal like with Ferrara, man. Burgundy is 100% disloyal. I don't see that horse event firing. It usually happens pretty quickly after you get them. Uh, maybe we should have just accepted to give the lowlands to Austria, man. And uh, pop out all those guys so I can fight them. Maybe it was a mistake uh, choosing to keep our union or burgundy or whatever. All right, here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Uh, let's declare on Liege here with one of uh, Gelray's claims. And uh, we can call in Castile and Aragon too, which is, of course, important because they're allied to France. <laughs> and I might even take uh, stuff from France here. So let's see how this war goes, boys. Ah, the real burgundy Liege war. Finally. <laughs> ah, <laughs> what is this? Austria declaring Bohemia? Oh, my God. Wait, it's just Austria, though. Let's do it. Why don't these guys have any troops? Did they go bankrupt? They didn't go bankrupt. They're stabbed up. What? Dude, we were just in the war with Hungary. They won. What did they do? Of course, Aragon is just chilling in Sicily. Actually, they just decided to move out. So uh, help, please. Come on. Well, this Bohemia war is obviously going to be an L. Austria dragged in Venice, too. All right, France is way stronger than I thought they would be. Even Castile and Aragon are having trouble dealing with them. And of course, their brain equals small and my uh, my strength equals small as well. So let's just white piece France right there and get this Liège stuff done with. And yeah, pretty much the Liège stuff is done with. Uh, now I need to find a way to slither out of this Austria war. All right, so to get out of this, I actually went into the offer tribute tab and suggested demands. And this is basically what Austria wants. So Eastern Burgundy will be pillaged by Austria. Good, I don't care about that. That's Burgundy's capital, basically. I pay them war reps and my lands with bohemia and give them cash overall i'm pretty satisfied with that so let's just get out of that stupid war right there pain still no horse event i made a mistake with burgundy man i should have chosen to release the low countries i am getting burgundy kind of loyal here they've dropped the 64 i think honestly man that i can uh dev some other provinces and they will become like uh pretty oh there it is yep all right they're loyal let me bump uh that up like a couple of times and this is not bad either man even though i don't own this land directly uh at least they'll help out in wars and stuff which is awesome now since we don't have naval superiority yet and our naval force limit isn't that big we still can't uh you know dominate this region right here and go on and just waltz into their land and take whatever but meanwhile i have built up plebes over here on denmark and what i think i'm gonna do is actually fight them now to take some stuff over here from them and weaken them maybe make them release norway or something like that so in the next war we can actually accomplish our goal and uh take over stockholm so let's Let's try and do this. Burgundy is loyal. They'll help. Poland will come in too along with Lithuania and Danzig. So that's pretty nice. And uh, this shouldn't be that hard. Let's try. And they've deleted their fort up here, which means uh, we won't get as much war score. But they are crossing right now. And I do think I can beat them here. So uh, yeah, easy, man. Easy. What are you thinking? And Lithuania is doing some work up here, which is awesome. Well, so much for releasing Norway. They just annexed them. <laughs> oh, let's go fight these guys again, huh? They moved their navy. I managed to get on here. Uh, let's get some cheaper advisors. Well, looks like I'm going to be losing some Diplor up here. Sorry, Aragon. All right. Poland dipped, but luckily they were super, super competent. And uh, they've occupied a big portion of Denmark and Sweden. Now, boys, we can already take Stockholm, man. <laughs> we can already accomplish our goal. So thank you, Poland. But this means that we can move along with our secondary side goal actually of making sweden not exist at all while also taking over stockholm so let me see what i can do in the peace deal here and this is my peace deal boys i'm gonna take all of finland from sweden of course i'm not taking any danish stuff and i'm also gonna take stockholm as well along with Holland. and uh that's that man i think i can't take anything else yeah the war score doesn't let me and if i keep going uh denmark will start unseaging stuff now sweden's province war score cost is 163 percent so we should be able to full annex them in the next war that's our first war with denmark and sweden done man lamish scandinavia who'd have thunk it not me
not me. And Sweden's province world short cost is now 90, which means, yes, we can totally full annex them in our next war. And that's going to be in about, hmm, let me see here, in about 12 to 15 years, I would say. Now they're losing to Muscovy, which is awesome. That'll make them even weaker. And I don't even think Muscovy will take something from Sweden. So, uh, but even if they do, we're good. But uh, that's actually our primary goal accomplished. Let's move on with our secondary of making Sweden not exist. Who knew it was so easy, man? Flanders. <laughs> we didn't even need Burgundy, to be honest. Thank you, Poland and Lithuania, man. Should I go Protestant? There's already three centers of reformation, so we won't spawn one. And I don't remember when's the last time we went Protestant or State Catholic, but uh, hmm. what should we do here? Let's just stay Catholic. Why not? I mean, Flemish, Finnish, what's the difference? We really need to get some galleys going right here. Luckily, I did get burger loans just now. So, uh, yeah, let's get about 30 galleys, man. I think we're gonna get four more transports. Yeah, should be good. But yeah, man, um, uh, stated up all this stuff right here. Reduced autonomy, accepted a couple of cultures, Dutch, Frisian, and Swedish. Built the army up to force limit. The fleet has been built as well. Of course, we are over naval force limit. And I think we're all set, man, for the next war with Denmark and Sweden. I even got a couple of claims on these guys over here. They did lose to Muscovy, lost their stuff over here and over here. And this should be way easier, man. We might not even need Poland, but of course I will call them in. Yes. And now Burgundy can't even be this loyal anymore because uh, I'm too too powerful for them. And now that I embraced colonialism, we're even a great power. The number five great power, actually. <laughs> We can take our third idea group here. I don't know if anything would really help us now. Maybe, uh, hmm, what could we go with here? Let's go naval, dude. Why not? <laughs> Let's go naval. <laughs> oh, wow. Poland declared on Muscovy, man. Ah, uh, I don't think this is a good idea, Poland. Or oh, actually, wait, they got 40k troops. Poland and Lithuania got like 60k. I got like 30k. Burgundy's got like 20k. Actually, good idea, Poland. Not bad. Of course, it sucks because my truce with Denmark runs out of about two years and I kind of wanted to fight them, but I guess we're fighting Muscovy. Muscovy is actually pretty strong. They got offensive. I did get beaten up by them, but uh, Poland is doing stuff over here, so yeah. We're good. I got a slack in here. I just noticed we don't have any manpower, man. All right, Poland ended their war with Muscovy. Took out a big chunk out of them, but now we gotta wait for uh to get some manpower before we hit Denmark again. I think I'm gonna roll a couple of generals here to get some professionalism so we can slack in just a bit. I might get a merc company or two up and running as well. Okay, and a little bit of time has passed. Let's see if we can actually declare the war to make Sweden not exist. And yes, if I declare directly on Sweden, Poland would join so I don't have to declare on Denmark. And uh, let's just declare for East Goatland over there. Call in Poland, Brunswick, Munster, confirm, click, click, walk. Yes. Mm, naval ideas working powerfully. We've already established naval supremacy. And I'm gonna try and avoid battles here and just siege because I'm low on manpower anyway. Such an easy war. I love it, man. Who knew Flanders is the most powerful country in EU4? Literally, that's the truth. Don't let anybody else tell you any differently. But let's see if we can uh, pull annex Sweden here, boys. So, there we go, these three provinces in the south, then these three, then these three, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And that's it. Yes. Sweden no longer exists. Yay! And now that I've cored everything up, taken Stockholm, and now that Sweden doesn't exist, let's try and do a little trickery here and uh, unstate everything that's not Swedish culture. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. And a boom, and a boom. And now that I've unstated everything that's not Swedish, I do have enough Diplo points to ultra shift to Swedish, and we actually can't form Sweden. Apparently, Sweden is not a reformable nation. Let me let the month tick by, but uh, yeah, yeah, we can't form Sweden, but that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> but yeah, man, there you go. We started off as the tiny, tiny nation of Flanders, a junior partner of Burgundy, as you all know. And I did get England, France, and Aragon to support my independence and that's where I first messed up because I actually shouldn't have gotten Aragon to support my independence because Burgundy just let me go but it was a sort of a blessing in disguise since I could improve relations with Burgundy and I did get the Burgundian inheritance they've been kind of feisty not so much at times but I actually wanted to conquer provinces from Holland and Brabant which didn't work out in the end and it also sucked that we didn't get the horse event which meant that we would have inherited Burgundy so yeah that didn't happen but 
We did manage to ally some guys over here and expand over here a bit just to get a border with Denmark so we can spy on them. And of course, then I attempted to ally Danish rivals without diplo ideas, by the way, quality economic naval, you know what it is. And I did manage to ally Poland, which ultimately ended up helping me fight Denmark and Sweden. And as you all know, for our primary goal, we were supposed to conquer Stockholm to become the Lion of the North as the Lion of the Flanders, well, the Flemish Lion, whatever. And for our secondary goal, we were supposed to make Sweden not exist. And overall, man, I thought this was going to be a super, super difficult run, starting off with getting free from Burgundy and then fighting these guys. But I think at the end, it turned out to be one of the easiest campaigns that we've done in A to Z. But overall, it was still super, super fun. And uh, I'm always up for wacky and weird goals like this. And, uh, you know, this is blue, but I don't know. Something about it feels off. I don't think it's quite the right blue. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm happy to say that this campaign as Flanders in A to Z has been a success. And that has been Flanders in A to Z. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a beautiful and powerful online platform from which to create your website. With Squarespace, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. You can create a community on your own Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system. You can use Squarespace's powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. And you can display posts from your favorite social media profiles on your website, as well as push content from your website to your favorite social media channels. And with Squarespace extensions, you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities. These third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, and streamline bookkeeping, and more. So, what are you waiting for? Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash redhawk to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Let me know in the comments below what I should do with this nation next week. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash theredhawklive. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more challenges like this or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.